When I was doing research for this show opening, I discovered there's something called a short beer. The hell is a short beer? <sighs> I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome everyone to another episode of Books and Beer. This week we're going to be discussing issues of size, specifically the world of the short story. If an author has one or many stories under 5,000 words, what are their options in the digital space? I'm joined this time by Doug Lance, editor of eFiction Magazine. Doug, please say hi, introduce yourself, and tell us what you are drinking. Hey everybody, I'm Doug. I edit and run uh, eFiction Magazines. It's a bunch of magazines I started. And uh, tonight I am drinking Lager of the Lakes from Bell's Brewery, local brew, oh. Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's very tasty. I so, I have yet to have that one. Hmm. But we're both Bell's fans, so I'm sure that is a tasty brew. What mm -hmm. you got tonight, Evo? Well, I am drinking, as you saw from the intro, something rather dark and scrumptious looking. Um, it's one of the Epic Brewing's experimental series, or exponential series. I think they're experimental, too. Uh, this is Fermation, no, Fermentation, there we go, without representation. Their Imperial Pumpkin Porter. And I haven't actually had it yet, so. Mm -mm. Ooh, pumpkiny. So it's... Sounds more like a pronunciation versus an experimentation issue. You're right, there. right. No representation without punctuation. No, pronunciation. Sorry. <laughs> okay, before we go any further down this ridiculous road, I am drinking a Tenya Creek Tandem Double IPA. First time trying anything from this brewery, and uh, thumbs up. Quite tasty. So I am ready to go. I like them. I like them. Kick us off there, Jeff. Let's All get right. to the books. So, Doug, uh, short story. How has technology affected how short stories are published, disseminated, and consumed? Well, it's still mostly yet to be seen. I mean, there's a lot. Short stories have always been affected by technology, like entirely. You know, when the new printing techniques came out, there's pulp fiction, which allowed, you know, short stories to really explode. That was really like the heyday of the short story. And since then, uh, printing technology has made longer works easier to publish, so they sort of fell by the wayside. But now, with digital publishing, short stories are going to have a new renaissance, I think. I think they're just going to come back in a big way. Um, books are getting shorter. People, people don't have as much attention, it seems, to read longer works. So I think short stories are coming back in a big way. Do you, do you think obviously part of that is and you mentioned you know it's a lot easier to publish right now authors are you don't have to put quite as much work into it so you don't need that big thing at the end um, but I'm curious what you think that that social uh, media things like Google Plus for example play in the in the short fiction market is that a factor as well? I mean, sort of what we're seeing is that stories, short stories aren't really being sold and developed independently as much as they are being consolidated into like posts on social sites and websites and uh, you know like any site you can post a document that's just a story that something happened to you or maybe it's totally fiction but you know on social sites these types of stories become shared millions of times and it's becomes its own thing in its own right like its own new medium sort of. Yeah you can just publish a short story by posting it on well, Google Plus, posting it on your blog, wherever it happens to go. You don't really need anything more than that. Well, but do you think most people are really going to consider that publishing? I mean, there's certainly a big semantic discussion we can get into, but I think most people, if they think about publishing a short story, they're not thinking about a blog post or Facebook or Google Plus post. They're thinking about something that they can go buy, either standalone or in a compilation or in something, you know, from Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Right. I think it's sort of it's sort of like a gray area. It's sort of like a new, new type of, I don't like a new category to put it in, because you know when I'm on the internet, I can I stumble upon stories that don't really fit in any other category by you know normal traditional means like just ridiculous stories that I 
see, and there's no way to categorize them, but they're still short stories. Well, I, I find it a little difficult to believe you found something ridiculous on the internet, but we'll just we'll just skip that for right now. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll leave that one alone. Well, let's get to the more traditional style of publishing, uh, although using digital forms where you actually do submit something, somebody downloads more than more than just simply going to a blog and reading it. Um, are are you specifically? Jeff talked about compilations a moment ago, which is the, mm. the classic form where we see more than one short story put inside of a of a book, and we buy that one book. Um, are many authors actually publishing uh, in in their own compilations? Yeah, I mean traditionally compilations are the domain of MFA students, uh, you know, Master of Fine Arts writing students. Generally, publishers only get stories from them or former MFA students. And But now, uh, because anyone can publish whatever they want, I don't see why you couldn't publish a, a short story compilation yourself to, you know, to Amazon or wherever. I think in the future it's going to be a lot more popular and we'll see a lot more uh, development in that space. Do you think it really is going to connect with readers as much? Like I, I used to love compilations and I still, this whole topic when it came up sent me back to my bookshelf looking and you know when I growing up if there was a Philip K. Dick you know compilation a bunch of his short stories or something from Asimov or whatever I mean it was mine. I still have some of them. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. But if I, you know, do I want a whole bunch of short stories from an author I've never heard of before or who doesn't have a track record, I wonder, you know, as much as I love digital books, if I'd really buy that. I think that if someone is trying to sell you a compilation that of a bunch of stories that you, from an author you've never heard of, that they're doing it wrong because you need to get a sample and really fall in love with someone before you invest that much into, you know, so many different stories. So what so, other op? Go ahead, you know. No, you were you were going right where I was. Keep it up. <laughs> so what other options are out there for self-published authors? So we talked a bit about blogs or self-publishing compilations. Uh, compilations, you can you know publish all your shorts individually for ninety nine cents, and then throw up a compilation for more, or you know, publish them individually for free even. Um, Amazon just released a new serial program, which I'm really excited about, where they're allowing people to pay up front, and then they'll get, you know, monthly serial uh, stories sent to their Kindles, so that's really cool. Um, a lot of people are seeing success with serials right now. Uh, Sean Platt and uh, David something. Uh, <laughs> Yesterday's <laughs> Gone. You've heard right. of those guys? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah we, we know those guys, yeah. Uh -huh. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, that's really cool that they're just seeing success with serials. I, I think that's possibly one avenue where shorts could return to, uh, you know, popular reading. Well, go ahead. Do you think that short stories? I mean, that, so so to me, it's a pricing issue, and I hear people talk about this all the time. The the average price, if you will, or at least a, a very common price uh, for unknown authors out there is the fantastic ninety nine cent price tag, which many authors lament, right? And so I can buy a ninety nine cent novel. I can buy eighty thousand words and pay ninety nine cents. Is it really the same value to get three thousand words from someone for ninety nine cents too, or is that a ripoff? I don't think it's a ripoff. I think if you're hooked by the description and the, you know, everything leading up to the purchase, if you're hooked by it, you're going to pay whatever it takes to really, you know, satisfy that, that that hook that somebody got with you. I think, I mean, not, I mean, obviously you're not going to pay like $99, but you're going to pay, you know, 99 cents for a short or whatever, whatever a reasonable amount would be right. So for that I think short. you're saying, I think you're saying just, it's really not a matter of you're not paying for the length. You're not paying by the word. You're paying for the experience and and the sure. entertainment. I mean, obviously, I was asking the question, trying to play devil's advocate here, but you know, the reality is, it's ninety nine cents, right? So that's not a lot of money. So if somebody really put something out that I really enjoy, I, I think that's decent value. Mm hmm. But you're being kind of uh, modest here. I mean, talk a little bit about e-fiction and what you're doing in terms of, um, you know, how you're bringing shorts out through the e-fiction magazine group. 
How many do you have now? I forgot you were doing this. I use single. Oh, what I'm trying to do away. is. Uh, I have 10 magazines going right now. It's pretty crazy. I'm uh, What I'm trying to do is basically do the exact opposite of what everyone else has always traditionally done with fiction magazines, which is aspire to the literary perfection of whatever. Um, basically, I have a mag we have magazines going in every genre. We have a magazine coming out of India now, which is cool. We're international. Um, so, yeah, we have all those going. And uh, basically what we're trying to do is just push the digital innovation as far as we can. So uh, basically it's it's like a community effort to produce the magazines. It's not just the editors sitting up in their tower, uh, you know, telling writers that they suck and other writers that they're good. And it's a community working together to produce a product that benefits the whole community. And it's a lot of fun to do. And uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, tell, telling writers that they suck, that that's my job. Uh, I, <laughs> I will do that. No, I'm kidding. Um, you know, you, you bring up an interesting point with, with all the, this new stuff that's happening, and I, and I wonder, uh, you brought up digital publishing, and you brought up this, these ideas, so is it something that an author, I, I guess what I'm trying to get to is, is there a shortcut? I mean, is a short story is a shortcut, or do you still have to go through the writing as well as the editing and all of the other things that happens inside of a novel? I think it, short stories definitely need editing, most definitely. They, it's, you still have to pay just as much attention to it as anything. Uh, it's, <laughs> I mean, it depends on what your, go what your goals are, but at the end of the day, if you want a professional product, you have to put professional attention into it. So I, you know, one of the things I like about what you're doing is the um, uh, curation aspect of it and you talked about it being community i you didn't want to be an editor sitting up in a tower i don't know why you'd want to give up a tower that'd be awesome i would love oh, to yeah. have a giant tower <laughs> and throw stuff down at people but um uh, you know talk about the benefits what does that curation in the, the community bring out to how you're handling shorts uh i think the main benefit is that it's not just one person's taste that is determining everything it's a wider base of taste like traditionally magazines operate with a group of readers who one reader will read it and give it an okay and then it'll move up the ladder to the next person. They'll give it the okay and then it goes to the maybe one more level and then it's in the magazine. Uh, what we do is we have a hundred plus readers who have access to things. They vote on them and then the top voted ones all go in uh, and I mean they go get edited, go in you know, produce. But I think that's a much better way to do it because it is a broader base of interest. You know, uh, more people will like stories that more people like. All right. So predict the future for us here as we're kind of winding up on time. Where do you see the opportunity for short form authors in the next, uh, let's say, year? The next one year? Next one year. Uh, if I was a short story, or if I was a writer who wanted to break in and be successful, I would definitely write a bunch of short stories and host them everywhere I could and just get people interested in my style and my ideas in my, you know, in me as a writer and leverage that towards selling my novels and short story collections and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just... Mm -hmm. Post it everywhere you can. So get it out. Yep. Get it. It's like golf when you're in the sand. Get it out. I, I don't play golf, but it, that's what they tell me <laughs> that you're supposed to do. So great. Jeff, any final parting thoughts? Uh, no, I think this is a just a really interesting niche that to me hasn't sorted out as much yet because like the 99 cents to the discussion earlier is, you know, kind of the domain of the, of the novella and this is sort of falling somewhere in between. I'm really excited to see where it goes. I think there's a lot of good stuff out there. It's just really hard to find. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for this new rebirth of the digital space and how we can do shorts because I've, I've kind of stopped reading them. So maybe we'll have some new opportunities. Looking forward to that. Well, Doug, thank you very much for being on the program with us today, my friend. Thank you, guys.
You can get links to Doug and all of those 7,500 magazines he mentioned or something like that. Um, all of that links will be at booksandbeer.com. And if you're watching this live or early January of 2012, there is still room for the classes that Jeff and I are offering, the publishing classes. They start on the 8th and the 21st of January. Or if you can't make that, why, we kick them back up again in February. You can go to our website for more details. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of ePublish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital world. For a complete list of our educational offerings, including classes, workshops, and seminars, please visit us at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks very much for being a part of the show.